Okay, so we're going to start pattern making our gourd skirt now. I've got the block here because there's two options, two ways of getting the measurements that you need to make this skirt. If you wanted to make the skirt so that the measurements are exactly the same as the block, so you get that con continuity of fit, um, you could actually measure, take the measurements off the block. So measure along your hip line. And remember this doesn't have seam allowances. Um, but they're added later anyway. Um, so measure along your hip line, combine those two measurements um, times by two to get your full hip measurement. And then measuring the waist spaces in between the darts. So you're not including the darts, so measure each of those. Um, so that's one option to get your measurements. The other option is to measure the actual uh, dummy itself or the person you're making the skirt for. So we just need the waist measurement. So our waist measurement is 69 here and our hip measurement and I've just marked that point with some pins so I get it nice and even all the way down. Just watch when you're measuring around the back if you're doing it from the front and swinging it around just make sure that see this is sitting a little bit above so so just make sure that you're actually getting the fullest part of the bottom there when you take your measurement because sometimes it can slip up or it can slip down which can change your your measurement by several centimeters so that hip is 95 centimeters okay so 69 for the waist and 95 for the hip so I've got these down here so what we need here we've got the waist measurement and the hip measurement so 69 centimeters and 95 centimeters are the base measurements and we have plus two centimeters ease so ease two centimeters for the waist and we're adding four centimeters on for the hip uh, ease so then we go so that takes us up to 71 centimeters for the waist and 99 centimeters for the hip. Then we divide by 12. So even though the, there's a six gore skirt that we're making, we actually need it divided by 12 because as you can see here, this is the, this is the pattern piece we'll end up with. We mark the center of that gore and then we go out half the amount one way and half the amount the other way. So the measurement from here out to the edge and from the center out to the edge of the hip is actually uh, half of uh, half of the panel, exactly Libby. Um, so we need to, rather than dividing by six, which would take us from here out there, um, we're actually dividing it by 12. So we go out half as much that way and half as much the other way. Mm -hmm. So the two measurements that we come up with are 5.9 centimeters for the waist, that's from our center out to the edge here, and 8.25 centimeters from the center out to the hip on this edge here. Okay, so what you can do too, um, maybe just give it a go because um, you know 5.9 and certainly 8.25 centimeters, uh, you know, like that's, that's 2.9, 0.25 millimeters there so that's a really tiny mark so what we could what you could do for your first sample is you could actually round this one the waist one up to six and take the I, I wouldn't take I wouldn't take the hip one down I would take it up so I would take it up to 8.3 which is a bit easier to deal with than 8.25 yeah it's always easy to run really something in from your first 12 isn't it Mark? exactly yeah mm -hmm. yep making it too small um but you do have to remember that yes any alteration that you make to this um will be then times by 12. Mm. so here that's actually by taking that up to six we're actually adding 12 millimeters onto the waist measurement um, and but only uh, what's that six six millimeters um, onto the hip measurement so not much added to the hip but um, a bit added onto the waist so just you know keep that in mind and you know if you're working on a computer it's easier to get those really tiny little measurements 
um, but you know when you're marking it by hand, you know sometimes it can it can add up. And yeah, and like I said, any any differentiation in that in that measurement is then times by you know all the number of gauze that you've got in the skirt. So to start our pattern, we just need to draw a line to begin with, and then from that line we'll come out at right angles both ways we'll measure down from our hip from sorry from our waist down to our hip is 20 centimeters um, I'm working half scale here but I'll, I'll say I'll just say that these are full scale measurements so 20 centimeters down to the hip level uh, and again squaring that out both ways so back up to the waist here, I can write that in, waist and hip. So at the waist we know we've got um, six centimetres that we want to go out each way. So six that way and six that way, so six and six and we just put a mark there and there. And for our hip, we've got 8.3. So that's 8.3, 8.3. Okay, so um, actually with, we're going to start, even though I introduced the, the pencil skirt version first, the um, the flare the a-line one's actually easier so we'll start with the easy one and once you've got those measurements so you've got your four points here which are the four points here our construction points and then we can take our line from that top construction line go up a little bit and then go down starting on the other side go up a little bit and then go down and of course, this, um, this length here is going to be the length of your skirt. So let's say our skirt, so that it fits on the page, is going to be 50 centimeters long. So we'll measure down 50. So 50 I've measured down from the, from the waist down through the hip all the way to the hem. So that's 50. Oh, that's probably upside down for you, but. <laughs> And then we're going to measure at right angles. And remember all of these two. So this is a right angle. All of these are right angles here. And remember too, if you're having trouble with your grading ruler getting a nice, um, a nice right angle, you can actually get another piece of paper and sit the paper you know, along your line and then just draw along that line because that'll give you a definite 90 degree angle. Um, and so we've gone 50 centimetres from the waist down to the hem here and we're going to measure that same amount. Now actually if we measure down the same amount it only comes within within like uh, probably half a centimetre in full scale of the line that we've drawn across. Um, but what happens there, there's a tendency even this is it's slightly on the bias so it's not on the straight grain anymore. So when, when it comes to sewing it, it will tend to stretch, you know, like even a little bit. And of course, depending on the fabric too. With this drill, it didn't really stretch at all because it's so stiff. Um, but just um, see how you go. I'd probably take it up um, half a centimetre. So half a centimetre. Half a centimetre full scale, full scale yep. yep. Um, and then at a right angle, so putting the, your line on the, on the seam here and then just coming across and swinging that around. And you can see that um, you, know, you actually get, um, get this line going up. And the reason we, we need to do this as well, if we didn't do this, uh, some I prepared earlier. So let's put it on here so you can see. So if you don't swing it up, you do tend to, tend to get a little point, you know, going around your hem. So what we've done here is we brought this up and we're swinging that around. So that's why this is a right angle here and here. 
around here so you get a nicer flow you don't get these corners on your hem um, having said that though it could be a design feature um, you know you could actually want those points especially like if you're working with stripes it might be cool if you know like if the stripes went parallel to the hem and then you might actually want to keep it in which case when you add the hem onto it you know you'd have to angle the hem slightly and that would certainly be easier to hem than um, than trying to hem a you know just a, a one line uh, circle circular hem which can get a bit tricky to work with okay so we've come up on that side there come up the same amount on the other side So a curve there and then you would add your hem onto that and we'll talk a bit more about about hems later so this doesn't include the hem at the moment um, generally with a with a circle skirt though you would only add a small hem um, so uh, you can add wider hems but they're a bit trickier to deal with so when you are adding a hem onto this you know you start with one centimeter maybe for the toile and see how that goes when it comes to hemming and then you can add a bigger hem later if you'd like to. The other thing too about um, uh, about the waist on here is that we need with the same things going to happen. So when we join our waists together, we actually have you can see the angle that's created on the top of each of these panel lines here. So what we want to do is come up a little bit higher and just smooth that off so on our pattern and you can see here on the full scale one we came up i had less i brought it up about two and a half millimeters uh from the from the line but then i decided to change it it didn't i didn't like the flow through at that height so i brought it up another another two and a half so that's five millimeters i came up here so literally coming up so this is two and a half half scale and again, you need to start at a right angle. Because remember, a right angle and a right angle make a straight line. And then you end up with this curve. So that's your original line. And this is our new line here. And actually, that's probably... This looks like it dips a little bit in the middle now, so you could actually bring that up slightly as well. Remember though that the more the more you bring it up, um, the more you're actually going, to, the smaller you're going to waste make the waist measurement. Um, so it's I suppose. Not a bad thing though, because you rounded it up. So well, that, exactly. It up. So yeah, yeah. So remember, we were working with 5.9 originally. We took it up to six. So by coming in a little bit, we're actually getting back to that original measurement yeah. anyway. Okay, so that's our that's our um, construction done, and so this is the the half scale pattern piece, um, and you can see here I've come up and I've added a seam allowance, so just a one centimeter seam allowance around the waist uh, and down the panel lines here, and I haven't added a hem on here, so that's just raw, which it is on the um, on the half scale here. So this is what we this is the pattern that I used to create this. So I've just turned the waist down to get rid of that one centimetre around the waist. But you would never um, do that normally on a garment, guys. No, <laughs> no. I'll show you in a minute the, um, the one with the waist facing. You could bind that top edge as well, in which case you wouldn't need a, um, a seam allowance. Um, well, that, that depends on the, on the, the type of binding. Yeah, yeah. So, so for the for the toile, good idea just to add a centimetre seam allowance, and you can stitch it under just so that you can work on the shape of the garment, and then go back to how you might want to finish the waistline. And also, a good idea to put some stay stitching on that um, stitch line at the waist, just to stop it stretching when you try it on the mannequin. Exactly. Because um, it will stretch some fabrics worse than others. Yep. Um, oh, and the other, the last thing, Mark, it's probably a good idea to have some um, hip notches, maybe, do you think? Yep. So that when you're sewing it together, it makes it a bit easier. Especially if it's a lighter, flimsier fabric. So I'm coming in at right angles. That's why it's like not right on that mark. It's a little bit up. So right angle to that hip point there. Little, um, 
notch and a notch. Um, depends on how long your skirt is as well. This one's quite short, just below the knee or on the knee. Mm. So the longer you have the skirt, the more notches. So you might, you know, if this was a metre long, you'd probably want to have three notches yeah. along the panel line to help you join it together. Um, this is our second one. So this one here is, is actually the one that's on the dummy. So what we've done here is the measurements are all the same. So uh, so we've come out six millimeters, uh, sorry, six centimeters here, and 8.3 on the hip on both ways, you know, either way, to get our our six our panel for our six scores. Um, and what I did here is that to make it uh, a pencil skirt, I've just taken whatever that measurement was there, the 8.3. I've taken that parallel to the grain line. That's the other thing too, is that this center line becomes your grain line. And then taken that straight down to the hem there. So that's literally just a rectangle there. Um, and then on the, what I did on the waist, because if you, if you have this coming up, this is a straight line, it comes up and touches the, uh, touches the hip line and then go, changes direction and goes up towards the waist you do tend to get a slight um, angle here on the hip. So what I did is I actually got my um, French curve or my, I don't have it here, but my shaping ruler, and then just came out a tiny bit um, in the middle of the, between the waist and the hip. So this would be sort of your high hip, um, just a uh, depth. Um, and then that's probably coming out, com coming out, <laughs> it's, it's probably been probably, taken out. Maybe, out. well, it's a, a couple of mil and half scale. So probably a, a um, actually, here, this is the one here. This, this is the full scale one. So you can see I've come out um, probably about uh, three millimeters there um, to get more of a curve over the hip. Um, so rather than it just going down to the hip and then turning the corner and then going down again. The other thing too is that you might also, if you're making this for somebody in particular, you might want to check their thigh measurement because sometimes the thigh measurement can be bigger than the hip measurement. So it might be that this actually comes, continues to come out to a greater hip, uh, thigh measurement and then it goes straight down from there. Um, personally, I think A-line skirts are more flattering than pencil skirts, but I know everybody loves a pencil skirt. So, um, so yes, uh, our, just having a look at this here. So you can see this is the full scale version here. And you can see that because, because these are panel lines, you can play with them. So you can actually you know, alter that panel line to take a little bit of that fullness out there. So you could um, you know, like start by doing what I've said and then seeing what it looks like on the dummy. So it fits nicely over the bottom. And like I said before, good over the side seam, but you do tend to get a little bit of fullness here. So... And that's in a stiff fabric. You might not even notice it in a softer fabric. Exactly, this is, this is very stiff, this fabric. So any little um, discrepancy in the fit is amplified, which is probably not a bad thing because it means that you, you become aware of that part of the fit. So I'll just put it on. Oh, yeah. Put it on inside out. Yeah. So, because the tricky thing is, if you pin it, if you put the pins on the outside of the garment, you then have to actually unpin it to, to you know, like to make the alteration to it if you're altering the sample. Um, oh, actually. It's a pretty common thing if you're not having a waist band, have a facing instead. Just remember that it's, but the zip's supposed to be on the side seam. So by turning it inside out and doing this sort of fitting. You can see here my seam allowances. So what I would do now, some pins. You can see here that slight fullness there, and you can pin that out. So hold the seam allowance out. You just pop in some pins. 
you'll need to go, you know, the waste is fine, so it goes back to zero at the waste. Maybe pin it all on the same side. Too. Yeah, yeah, sorry, Which yes. It it's it's sewing, yeah, yeah, it's funny to do it yeah, on that yeah. side for me. But um because the th the thing is too, yeah, you'd give this a go. And then just back to nothing. Yeah, so you can see there. A little bit at yeah. the top, more at the middle, and then going back to nothing down towards the hip. Yeah. And then you literally just run that in on the sewing machine, do the same on this panel, because they're your two front panels, so they have to mirror each other. And then just have a little play on the back there too. And on the back, because you've got the bottom there, you know, this, the alteration is probably going to be higher up. So, but what one thing you have to consider though is that by doing this fitting, you'll get a better fitting skirt, but it also means that you lose the convenience of just having one pattern piece. So to do this, you would have to then have the center back pattern piece, a side back pattern piece, a side front and a center front pattern piece. So you go from having one pattern piece to four pattern pieces, but you would also go, um, you know, have a much nicer fit. And, that, and, and that's, that's meaning that if you want to, you know, if you want to uh, copy, you know, if you want to make more of this skirt and you want it to fit the same, then you would have to make the four pattern pieces. If you're, um, if you're just making one skirt, uh, for you know, for one person, you can just run that in, um, and uh, and that that's it. You actually don't then you know the fit is good, so then you don't need to make all the extra pattern pieces because this is just a one-off anyway. Yeah. You could oh. just make note on the pattern which panels you ran. Yeah, you exactly. You, you could write to. some notes yeah. on there and then just have that one pattern block um, for you know that particular person. The other thing too is that, you know, like I said earlier, by having, by taking a measurement on the body around this level here, potentially you'd get rid of that fullness, you know, in your in your toile anyway. Um, so you probably wouldn't need to do this fitting. So you could do three measurements, not just the waist. Yeah, exactly. Waist, high, high hip, hip, and maybe thing. even the thigh. So yeah. you know, like you get really definite yeah. measurements at each of those levels, and it's much less likely that you'll have to then, you know, alter alter the garment um, after it's been made up.